don't worry, that's the last slide you'll see. Let's do some straight database talk, no slides. Let's talk about ASH and AWR. ASH and AWR store snapshots which are captured at an interval of 10 seconds. Based on this, how do we identify SQLs which are missed, that they're, I'm assume missed from being that, a, that capture because they're at 10 second intervals and probably cause performance issues? Active session history grabs the details of every active session on your database once every second, and it stores that in a circular buffer in memory. Because memory is not infinite, at regular intervals, we dump that information down to the historical tables in AWR tables, and we collect them via snapshots, etc. But to keep things manageable in size, we do a sampling algorithm. So out of those uh, one second snapshots, we grab every 10th one, and they're the things that are stored historically. The logic here is pretty simple. On an actively running system, let's say your ASH data might be held for say 12 hours. The idea is if you have a problem, you can go back and look at that granular one second intervals to see maybe where the problems were. If you had a SQL statement that ran for say 25 seconds, you would see 25 rows in the ASH data once every second, and you could use that information generally by counting the rows to see which SQLs were perhaps problematic. As that data gets aged out, that same 25 second SQL would now appear simply twice or maybe three times in the historical information. Because they are 10 seconds apart, you could probably still make some inferences about the slow runningness of that SQL. A couple of key things I would recommend to look at here is in your ASH data and your historical ASH data, you'll often see the SQL ID column. And obviously that's the SQL ID is how we tap into things like V$ SQL, et cetera. However, another really important column on ASH and AWR is a thing called the SQL exec ID, which is like a sequence number for each time we execute that SQL. So in your ASH data, if you see a SQL ID of ABC and a SQL exec ID of some one, two, three, and that stays constant for 25 rows, that's a single execution that ran for 25 seconds. If you see the same SQL ID, but the exec ID changes once for every one of those 25 rows, it means that you actually had 25 executions of that SQL that were picked up. You may have had a whole lot more because as we said, Ash only grabs things every second. You may have run 20 times a second or 30 times a second and just one particular one got grabbed at that active point in time. So what I do is I use the Ash data as well as a combination of the other things like V$ SQL stats, because V$ SQL stat will store things like execution counts. If you've got a long running slow SQL, ASH and AWR, it stands out like a sore thumb or a sore finger. If you've got systems that are having problems because you've got a small fast SQL that's being run many, many, many times, then the execution counts in V$ SQL stats and DBA hist SQL stat will pick those out as well. One thing I will say about Ash, and this is you can uh, if you search for Ash on my blog, connor-mcdonald.com, one of the things I used to do when I worked at customers was I was always a little bit sort of um, pessimistic about the fact that we threw away the Ash data so quickly, nine out of every 10 samples. And there are two ways of actually avoiding that. One is there is actually an undocumented hidden parameter, starts with an underscore, which tells you how many samples we're going to keep. I think it's set to 10, which means it's every 10th sample. If you set that to one, you actually keep everything from your ASH memory into your historical data. That obviously builds up faster, you use a lot more space, but it can be done. One of the things I used to do to get a bit more control over that was rather than tweak that parameter, I would leave my standard AWR tables as every 10th sample. But I had a routine which simply copied the entire ASH structure out to my own partition table, you know, called it you know, ASH history. And all I would do is every hour, I'd simply dump everything I hadn't got already from V$ Active Session History into that and just let it grow. I could compress that, I could remove the columns that weren't of interest to me, but I could keep every single row for say a month or so. The reason I found that useful is depending on the customer, but it was all those things where someone would come up and say, hey, last month's batch processing ran really slow. Do you know why? And obviously having that low level ASH data for say a month or even three months was really useful for going back for those longer term queries. And as a result, you, you model it based on the customer. If the customer has say a weekly cycle of critical say reports or batch processes, you'd only keep 10 days. If they have things where like every six months they run some critically important stuff, you might choose to not keep all six months, but you might keep 
that the period in and around those six month intervals. So you can always do compare and contrast. So on my blog, there's a routine which is simply keep a copy of ASH and you can keep it as long as you want and it does automatically partition maintenance, et cetera. Or you can tweak that underscore parameter with the guidance and approval of Oracle support, obviously, to actually collect more granular data in your historical tables. So that's some ideas on how you can get more granular ASH data for performance diagnosis. Thank you.